Well, hello class, how are you? It's Mr. Yellow Robe. I hope you all are having a very good day. I'm having a really nice day today myself. I'm here to read this great story to you today. It's called Rabbit's Snow Dance. This is a really cool story uh, from the Iroquois tribes. There's five Iroquois tribes, we'll learn about those. But this story is about this rabbit who just can't wait too impatient, and we'll find out what happens when this rabbit, because he can't wait, what happens to him. So think about that, but before we think about this great story and hear about this great story, what I want to do is I want to talk about the Iroquois tribes. There's five tribes. They live in New York. That's way across the country. This is where we live in Montana. New York is way across the country. It's too far to walk to New York. There's five tribes who live in, in New York as part of the Iroquois Nation. And the five tribes are the Mohawk, the Seneca, Cayuga, Oneida, and Onondaga. The one really great thing that we want to learn about the Iroquois is that the Iroquois a long time ago, they didn't live in teepees. They lived in long houses. And that's exactly what they are. They're very long houses. And you'll see in the picture uh, on the screen where the arrow is pointing around, they lived in these villages. And in these villages were a number of long houses. And in these villages, they had their houses and they also farmed. They mainly grew beans, corn, and squash. But they also grew other uh, fruits and vegetables as well and hunted so that that could make up their diet. You'll see the fort that they build or built around their villages to keep them safe and to protect them themselves. So again, this is very different from what we know and what we might know about other tribes. A lot of times that we think that tribes, uh, Indians only live in teepees. And if you put your thinking cap on, teepees are the tents. They're a cone or a triangle at the top and they're a circle at the bottom. And so, and then they have the poles that keep the uh, teepee or tent up. And the, the teepee uh, are for the was the housing type that the Indians on the plains who followed the buffalo. Now, the Iroquois, they didn't follow the buffalo. They were farmers, but they were also hunters as well, so that they could build permanent housing. So I want, to ta want you to take a look at this next screen. It's a great video that shows what the longhouse looked like on the inside and how they used it and why it was important to the Iroquois. After you watch that video, you'll I'll, I'll return to read the story. Then I will ask you a few great questions about this really cool story. Imagine living with your entire family, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, and all their children. Don't you think the house would be a little crowded? And yet, this was how the Iroquoian people lived. They lived in a long house with their mother's family. There could be 25 to 60 people in a single house. How did they manage to all live together? Well, like the name says, it really was a long house. Plus, it could be easily expanded because it was made of wood and bark. It had two doors, one at each end, but no windows. Inside, each family had its own separate space. Since the Iroquoians were sedentary people, 
They built strong homes that lasted a long time. Unlike the Algonquians, who were a nomadic people, the Iroquoians did not move their homes. When they built a longhouse somewhere, it was meant to stay there. Here is how the house was divided. There was a central aisle that ran down the length of the house. This aisle had a series of fire pits that were used for cooking and staying warm. Above each fire pit, there was a smoke hole in the ceiling to let out the smoke. On both sides of the aisle were beds that looked like bunk beds. The top bunk was a shelf that was used as a storage space, although children sometimes slept up there too. Bark walls separated each family's space, and each fire pit was shared by two families. Long ago, they say rabbit did not look the way rabbits do today. Back then, rabbit had a very long, beautiful tail. But even though his tail was long, his patience was short. Whenever rabbit wanted something, he would chant, I want it, I want it, I want it right now. One day, rabbit was wishing it would snow. Why, with feet so big that they were like snowshoes, Rabbit could hop right on top of the snow and reach much higher into the trees for tasty leaves and buds. The only problem was that it was summertime, and as everyone knows, it's not supposed to snow in the summer. Rabbit, though, was impatient. I want snow, he said. I want it, I want it, I want it right now. And Rabbit knew a special song to make it snow. And in the winter, he would sing that song and dance in a circle playing his drum. And it would snow every time. He had never tried in the summer because that was not the right season for a snow song. But Rabbit did not want to wait. He ran through the forest to get his drum, chanting, I will make it snow, as he can apple. I will make it snow, as he can apple. As he can apple. That word means it will snow foot wrappers, great big flakes of snow. So when the other animals heard Rabbit singing, some of them got worried, and Chipmunk and Squirrel tried to stop him. It's too soon for snow, they said. We haven't finished gathering enough nuts for the winter. But Rabbit ran past them and kept on chanting. I will make it snow, as he can apple. I will make it snow as it can apple. Beaver and Turtle looked up from their pond as Rabbit ran by. I haven't finished my dam, Beaver complained. I'm not ready to go to sleep for the winter, Turtle said. But Rabbit ran past them too, still chanting. Other animals heard Rabbit, but they did not believe him. That will never happen, Moose rumbled. Making it snow in the summer is almost as hard as stopping the sun from coming up, Bear growled. Soon Rabbit reached his home. He took out his drum and began to sing his song as he danced in a circle. E-o, thump, thump. E-o, thump, thump. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Small flakes of snow began to fall from the sky. That made Rabbit happy, but there was not enough snow yet for him to reach the tender buds in the branches above him. A little snow is good, Rabbit said. Maybe more snow is better. E-o, thump, thump. E-o, thump, thump. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. All over the forest, animals saw the snow falling. The ones with big white feet, like lynx and otter and grouse, were pleased. They liked the snow and enjoyed playing in it. They even sang along. E-o, thump, thump. E-o, thump, thump. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. 
Other animals were not pleased. They were small, and the deep snow was now over their heads. Rabbit did not notice their troubles. He just kept on singing. Eo, thump, thump. Eo, thump, thump. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Now the snow was so deep that it came up to the chests of the bigger animals. They all rushed for shelter. Soon Rabbit was able to reach those tender buds on the trees, but he was not satisfied. If a lot of snow is good, then a lot more snow will be better, he thought. So he kept on singing, and all of the animals had left to find shelter, but Rabbit was too foolish to stop. He kept on singing and dancing and playing his drum. When the snow had gotten so deep that it covered the tops of all but one of the tallest trees, Rabbit realized he was tired. He stopped singing. I think I need to take a nap, he said, and he hopped into the top of that one tall tree that still stuck out above the snow and fell asleep. Rabbit slept all night. Even when the dawn came, he kept on sleeping. Now the summer sun began to shine and all that snow began to melt. It melted down below the tops of the trees. It melted down below the middle of the trees. It melted down below the bushes and it melted down below the grass. Soon all of the snow was gone. The other animals were happy. They came out again and began to do all the things animals do in the summer. Rabbit, though, was still asleep high, high up in the top of the tallest tree. Finally, near the end of the day, he woke up. Time to hop around on all my snow, Rabbit said. He had not yet wiped the sleep from his eyes. He didn't see that the snow was gone. And so when he stepped from the top of that tree, he got a big surprise. Hi! And Rabbit fell. And as he fell, that long tail of his caught on one branch after another. And each time, a little bit was pulled off. Finally, kaboom! Rabbit hit the ground. His tail felt funny. He turned back to check it and saw that almost all of that long tail was gone. He looked up and pieces of his tail were stuck on the tips of the tree branches. Ever since then, at the time of the year when the snow goes away, you can see all those little furry pieces of rabbit's tail stuck on certain trees. Some call them pussy willows. But those who know about rabbits' snow dance know what they really are. To this day, Rabbit has a short tail, and even though he still loves the snow, he has learned to be more patient. He no longer sings his snow song in the summertime. However, during the colder months, if you can keep an open ear toward the forest, you may just hear a small voice singing this song. Eo thum thum, eo thum thum, yo yo yo, yo yo yo. And when you hear that, you better head for home. Soon it will begin to snow. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I enjoyed reading it. The one great thing of the many things that I liked best about this story was we learned that our good friend Rabbit had a very nice, beautiful tale at the beginning. But what happened at the very end? He now has a very short tail. Now, you can see Rabbit at the beginning. He looks fairly happy satisfied, not too bothered, but at the very end, he does not look happy. He looks very surprised now that his big, long, beautiful tail is gone, and now it's a short cotton tail. So that says a little bit about uh, his impatience and him not being able to wait till winter time for summer. I know that he wanted the leaves and he wanted the buds that were in the trees, 
but he just couldn't wait. And so because he couldn't wait, he lost something that was very important to him. So hopefully that's not happened to any of you where you've had the time and the patience to just wait for something good to happen. Maybe you were waiting for your birthday. Maybe you were waiting for Christmas. Maybe you were waiting for your school lunch today. But as you waited patiently, those things finally came to be. So I hope that you enjoyed this story as much as I did. And I will see you in one month when we read a different story.